After the fantastic showing between the Vancouver Titans and San Francisco Shock in the Stage 2 Finals, this stage has come to a close with the All-Star event for last Overwatch League action before the mid-season break. As such, it's time for me to bring you guys my final power rankings at the end of this stage with a few variations and positions based upon playoff performances alongside other factors like traits, so let's get straight into it. The teams from 20 through to 16 see little movement as I have nothing much to add in regards to the Paris Eternal, Washington Justice and Guangzhou Charge whose positions I was very happy with in last week's rankings, and these teams have a lot to prove after the break in Stage 3. The only change in the bottom 5 I have made is by swapping the Houston Outlaws and Florida Mayhem who are now at 20 and 19 respectively. This is directly as a result of a trade between the Mayhem and the Valiant in the past week. Florida have now acquired Fate in exchange for McGravy as well as Shaq some fact fiction from their contenders roster and I, like I think most other people, think that Florida overall got the better end of the trade, especially with their decision to move to an all Korean roster. Unlike the Outlaws, at least this is a sign that this terrible team has recognised the need for them to make trades and bring in new players and unless Fate continues his poor form and ends up following in the footsteps of Miro they've picked up a player who had the calibre to make last year's South Korean World Cup team and it's this potential upgrade in talent that gives me enough reason to promote them a spot higher. That said, the Orgs still should remain under intense scrutiny, with their latest pickup of Birum odd and now potentially spelling the exit for Hagobun who has been one of their best players this season, but at least they're trying to be proactive unlike Houston who are completely banking on a big change in the meta for their team to find success. Now looking at the 15 to 11 positions, we can see that I've not moved anyone with the situation not really changing at all for the majority of these sites. The only team I really want to talk about is the LA Valiant at 13, as a lot of you said in the comments last week that you thought they perhaps should have been higher. I think the main argument was that this team had the potential to challenge for top 10 if someone like Kareev was being played more often and whilst I agree that a debate could be had in this instance, I don't think the team has shown us any concrete evidence they want to move in this direction as the coaches have a lot of faith, rightly or wrongly, in the ability and potential of Iziaki. Equally, following their trade with Florida, I think this spot suits them even more now. Their roster has undoubtedly gotten stronger as a whole, but it's unlikely that Shaxx, but especially McGravy are actually going to be able to make an immediate impact in the starting lineup. and based on the very limited owl showings from Fact Fiction, I'm hesitant to put much faith in his standing at the main tank role in the place of fate, but at the same time I'm going to wait until we can actually show off his skill that he showed in contenders next stage before I make my final judgement. The group of 5 teams that find themselves just inside the top 10 see a little more of a shake up. I'm pretty happy with where I've got Philly and Dallas with the fuel only falling as a result of the dragons who I'll get on to discussing later. As for the other three, I slotted my biggest faller of the week in London just behind the spark in the dynasty meaning they fall 5 places. Despite my complete lack of faith in them to begin with, I think I felt obliged to move London up last week after they secured the two seed as New York and the Gladiators fell to weakened opponents. I thought they'd lose to either Hangzhou or Seoul had they faced off in the playoffs and their subsequent loss to the Spark backed up this opinion with their loss being far more one sided compared to the Dynasties that was a lot closer and competitive, hence why I'm comfortable putting the Spitfire behind them. Finally we have the top 5 which sees all 5 teams move positions with the Gladiators and New York mainly rising thanks to London's fall, although whilst I think the Excelsior restored my confidence in them with their performance over Vancouver, particularly on the side of Mano, the Gladiators are on a very short leash given their worsening performances despite their results over the course of this stage. With a brand new entry into the top 5 in the Shanghai Dragons but the most improved stage of any team in my opinion, with their only losses coming to 3 of the 4 teams above them in these rankings. In my opinion, they got better and better as the stage went on, culminating in them taking the first map off of the shock at this stage, whilst making a lot of other maps com very competitive themselves, showing the development they've made in every aspect of the side. Lastly, to honour my word for the past two months, I said it would take a loss for Vancouver to drop from the number one position, and as we saw last weekend, it was finally San Francisco that was able to deliver it in a fantastic affair. I think this game perfectly demonstrated that these two teams are clearly the best in the league, and a tier of their own, and until the meta shifts or a team makes major improvements, we will likely be seeing them remain here for the foreseeable future. And with that we've reached the conclusion of my end of stage 2 power rankings and I hope you enjoyed. I'll be looking to make a couple of videos probably on the all stars event in the next couple of days that starts tonight and with that said please like, subscribe and follow me on twitter for this continuing overwatch league coverage and content.